Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of Prehistory in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons and our channel members over at our sister channel, History in the Dark. You were the reason why this content remains making pointless arguments. And today, we're going to discuss Archaeopteryx, which is a genus of dinosaur but a very important one. It was arguably the first dinosaur ever discovered to have feathers, way back in 1861. This discovery was huge for the future of paleontology and understanding what dinosaurs actually were. Instead of big, dumpy lizards, they were actually more closely related to light, agile birds. Though the big, dumpy lizard idea still stuck around for at least another century, even though Archaeopteryx had already been discovered. However, the story isn't quite about Archaeopteryx's discovery, rather about the time that someone, actually a few people, who weren't paleontologists, decided that Archaeopteryx was a fake animal. And no, not for any creationist reasons, just because that's what they thought, even though they weren't paleontologists at all. This is the story of the false allegations against Archaeopteryx. Like I said, having been described in 1861, Archaeopteryx was a very important find. It basically confirmed Charles Darwin's theory of evolution, and it was found just two years after he published On the Origin of Species. It was a key piece of evidence regarding the notion of transitionary fossils, and for a long time it was thought that Archaeopteryx was the common ancestor of all modern birds. Nowadays, it's questionable how true that actually is. It's believed it's definitely a close relative, but maybe not the actual ancestor, as a lot of other species similar to Archaeopteryx have also been found with feathers. And in fact, a lot of dinosaurs have been discovered to have had some level of feathers. It wasn't nearly as unusual as was once thought. Generally speaking, if it's a small, agile dinosaur and it's in the Jurassic or Cretaceous, it probably had some level of feathers. And even something larger like a T-Rex may have had a limited amount of feather coverage. What was key for Archaeopteryx is that the feathers that it had were considered advanced, rather flight feathers. And that meant that the evolution of feathers began well before Archaeopteryx existed at all. It raised a lot of questions, probably more than it answered, but it was still a very important piece of the evolutionary puzzle when it came to dinosaurs, and birds for that matter. Since its initial discovery, at least 10 more fossils of Archaeopteryx have also been unearthed, as well as a number of similar species, and other dinosaurs that obviously also had feathers to a certain degree. Feather impressions were a very important part of putting this all together, but it's a pretty rare thing. Fossils in themselves don't form very often, and feather impressions are even rarer. But they do happen, and when we find them, it definitely helps enhance our knowledge of the past. However, in 1985, a group of individuals published a series of papers that claimed that the feathers on the Berlin and London specimens of Archaeopteryx were actually forged. This group of scientists included astronomer Fred Hoyle and physicist Lee Spetner. Now, of course, these are still scientists and educated individuals who had long and prosperous careers in their fields, but in their fields. Neither astronomy nor physics has a whole heck of a lot to do with paleontology. If you were a geologist, I might hear you out, but not these other two. Stay in your lane. How about that? Most of the evidence for a forgery of the feathers was based on their unfamiliarity with the processes of lithification, which is a process in which sediments compact under pressure. One of their proposals, for example, was that based on the difference in texture associated with the feathers, the feather impressions were applied to a thin layer of cement, not actually rock, without realizing, of course, that the feathers themselves would have caused a textural difference because they have different texture than bones. They also completely misinterpreted the fossils too, as they claimed that the tail was forged as one large feather, which it absolutely wasn't. You can actually see that it wasn't. Did you even look at this? And they also claim that the other specimens of Archaeopteryx known at the time 
did not have feathers, which is wrong. That, that, that's just not even remotely correct. Both the Maxburg and Ekstat specimens have obvious feathers. They also didn't believe that the slabs that the remains were founded would necessarily split so smoothly, or that one half of a slab containing fossils would have good preservation, but not the counter slab. But those are common properties of Solholfen fossils, because the dead animals would fall onto hardened surfaces, which would then form a natural plane for the future slabs to split along and leave the bulk of the fossil on one side and little on the other. Additionally, the motives for suggesting the forgery are kind of ridiculous. It's just absurd, actually. One of their suggestions is that Richard Owen wanted to forge evidence in support of Charles Darwin's theory of evolution, which doesn't seem likely, since Owen at the time didn't really support Darwin that strongly. Why would he forge something that defeated his own argument? That makes no sense. And the other is that Owen wanted to set a trap for Darwin, hoping that the latter would support the fossil so Owen could discredit him with forgery, which makes a little more sense than the first one, but that still seems unlikely because Owen wrote a detailed paper on the London specimen. So even if this was true, it would make him look stupid as well. Their claims were almost immediately pushed back on by Alan J. Cherig and others at the Natural History Museum in London. Cherig pointed out that there were hairline cracks that ran through the slabs and the fossil impressions, as well as mineral growth over the slabs, and it occurred before discovery and preparation, which is something that can only happen if the feathers were original. Spetner followed up by attempting to show that the cracks would have propagated naturally through their postulated cement layer, but he neglected to account for the fact that the cracks were old and had been filled with calcite, and thus weren't able to propagate at all. They also attempted to show the presence of cement on the London specimen through X-ray spectroscopy. And they did actually find something that wasn't rock, but it also wasn't cement. It was probably a fragment of silicone rubber left behind when the molds were made of the specimen. Their suggestions, naturally, have not been taken seriously at all by paleontologists, as their evidence that the feathers were fake was largely based on complete and total misunderstandings of geology. And they never at any point discussed the other feather-bearing specimens, which have only increased in numbers since then. The whole thing was ridiculous, and a, frankly, a complete waste of everyone's time. It wasn't fake. Any person who actually studies rock at all, a geologist, a paleontologist, even an archaeologist, probably would have known better and been able to tell them that no, 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 th these are real. Why are you, why are you even here? Why are you even in our office? This isn't your field. You are an astronomer. You are a physicist. Why are you even worried about this? Why are you pretending to be experts at something that you didn't study at all? Normally, I wouldn't sneer at scientists, because I'm sure in their fields, they're very knowledgeable. But when it came to this, they had no idea what they were talking about and just assumed they did. And assumed they knew better than the people that actually study this stuff and knew for years that the Archaeopteryx was a very real creature that really lived in the late Jurassic period. And it's still a very important species. The first one to directly and obviously suggest that dinosaurs had more in common with birds than they did reptiles. And that was something paleontologists and humanity at large needed to know. Any kind of factual knowledge is important to learn. And when you have self-proclaimed experts in a field that again, they didn't study, trying to discredit that knowledge it only hurts progress. I don't mind being skeptical about certain things, but only when the arguments make sense. And in this case, they absolutely didn't. The Archaeopteryx is not the Piltdown Man. It was a real dinosaur.